Hey everybody, welcome back to Bonsai Tortoise. Today, we're getting ready for spring. So even though my greenhouse is technically a tropical greenhouse, uh, the plants in here actually do slow down a lot in the wintertime. Um, but one of the sure signs that spring is coming is if you look at the Brazilian rain tree, uh, they start budding out really good. Now my Brazilian rain tree drops its leaves um, every year. It looks horrible. I'm growing this one out really tall so I can uh, grow that base nice and thick down there. But uh, back to the spring stuff, if you look right here, you can see the buds are swelling. So that's, that growth is coming in all along this tree. Within a week, this tree is going to go from something looking really shabby to just pure green in growth. Uh, these leaves will no longer be sagging and half folded. Though they won't be yellow. You know, these are pretty much dead leaves. But uh, you're going to have nice, big, good green growth in here because of all these buds. I'm not sure if you can see them all, but they're everywhere, up and down every single branch of this tree. And other tropical trees, they really show that it's time to start growing. So if you look at this Ficus microcarpa, you know, this, this, this is all new growth, probably in the last month right here, from about here to here, that's all new growth. So this tree is due for a cutback. It's just a, a pre bonsai net right now, but um, you know, I'll be cutting all that stuff back to kind of keep it in training. Other trees like this Scream Mound Ficus right here, these leaves are the last year's leaves. They're going away, they're dying. And you can see the new buds coming out. Uh, this, this is a brand new, fresh green leaf here. Uh, so everything's really growing really, really nicely this time of year in the, in the greenhouse. This buttonwood here has really just, just really flush with growth. All these things are new growth. I just actually cut this back a few weeks ago, uh, but you can see all new growth here. Uh, so it's real exciting to see how your trees react, uh, even in a greenhouse setting where, you know, just because the temperatures are good all winter doesn't mean that uh, they don't show signs of a winter slowdown. They absolutely do. This uh, this ficus microcarpa right here, uh, this this one right here, you can see back here. This is all new growth. Now this is closer to the window, so it's got better access to light. Even though there's light directly above it, the sun hits it better back here. This is all new growth back here. So this tree is uh, due for a cutback and probably a total defoliation in the next week or so. You see a lot of new growth right here. All this stuff. In the greenhouse, just because it's a tropical greenhouse and it stays relatively warm in the wintertime, it's still really, really exciting to watch the plant growth and how it changes at the end of winter when spring is coming on. Short sign of spring is coming is our Greek tortoises. They're out. They're done brew mating and um, they're doing their thing. So it's still cold out, but even if you look at your outdoor plants, uh, they will start showing signs of spring. So this is these trident maples here. They, they're starting to bud back just a little bit, just a little bit. They're pretty much, they're due for a, a repot, uh, which I'll be doing soon. Um, but they're starting to bud back, which means uh, spring is coming and that it's uh, repotting time. And uh, another sign of winter is when your pots don't cooperate with it and they, uh, they go bust. So the end of winter, early spring is really my time to start cleaning everything up and and uh, getting everything ready to come outside. Nothing's gonna come out here for the next, probably at least two months, month and a half, two months. Uh, but uh, right now it's time to start prepping everything because especially with the tortoise pens, you wanna make sure they have good weed growth and all that stuff and they're ready for the tortoises to come out. So this area here is where we keep all of our, most of our bonsai and all that stuff. Uh, it's very disorganized right now. During the winter time, I have all different kinds of projects going on. So this pretty much comes a catch all for stuff. Uh, but this all needs to be cleaned up. That's our hatchling enclosure right there. Obviously our greenhouse back here. If you walk back a little further. These are our tortoise enclosures. Um, I got to clean all this stuff up. This uh, right here is our Greek enclosure. That is what used to be our sulcata enclosure when we had sulcatas. Uh, however, this first probably 12 feet of this, so I'm going to split this up and make this the Herman's enclosure. And then our red foots are going to go here. Uh, our redfoots used to be in the enclosure way up there, um, but I think they're going to do better 
in this back section. It'll be nice and big for them. So these enclosures don't look like anything right now, but uh, once they get cleaned up, they're, they're going to look really good. And um, the uh, once the the spring the spring really hits heavy, you'll see that weed growth, and it'll be lush and green, and it'll look really good. You can notice uh, I have a lot of uh, sticks and stuff in that. Um, there's there's logs and sticks in all of our enclosures because it gives them areas to kind of climb over. Uh, they offer some sight barriers. The hay that you see all over the place, uh, that is actually uh, leftover bales of hay from Halloween. And when we had sulcatas, um, we, they would really help uh, regenerate the soil, help actually seed that. Um, and within a few weeks, all that new grass would come up uh, in the springtime, uh, which the sulcatas would, would eat. Um, now, we don't have any sulcatas anymore, but um, it's still going to provide some kind of um, uh, nutrients to the soil and show a little weed growth. All right, well, that's pretty much it for now, in this area at least. Um, you can see I had those tubs in the wheelbarrow with the ice still frozen in them. Uh, next week's going to be in the 60s, or 50s at the lowest, so that'll be gone. Uh, just to show you one thing back here. So it's always good to have extra tubs. So if this greenhouse ever goes down for any reason, uh, I can put everything in those tubs and bring them in the house if I want. These also come in handy when uh, we get like a cold snap in June or September and the hatchlings are still outside. I can put those in the greenhouse there uh, with a little bit of substrate and put the hatchlings in it so they're protected from the inclement weather. These are all junipers, pines, maples. Um, they all stay outside all winter, so there's nothing to do with them besides a couple of them need to be repotted and once we start getting new growth, we'll start trimming them back. But they're good to go for now. This here is our hatchling enclosure, and that doubles as not only a hatchling enclosure during the warmer weather, but also uh, to keep uh, fragile deciduous seedlings. So I'll take you in closer and show you that. All the pots you see inside here are all uh, trident maple seedlings uh, from last year. So uh, we'll see how many come back, how many minutes through the winter. But this hatchling enclosure really helps protect them if there's any strong winds or any, any issues uh, during the winter time. So um, uh, they're uh, all kind of come out now though. Okay, so they're good to go. Uh, they'll probably get a lot better sun up here as opposed to being inside this cage. Um, and uh, we should start seeing new growth eh, in the next week, week or two, something like that. I can see that some of them probably aren't going to make it. Uh, this one somehow came out of the pot a little bit. We'll see if it comes back and it actually looks a little dried out. Uh, but anyway, a lot of them should be okay. And I actually had a uh, eastern red cedar uh, sapling starting there um, too. So um, they're good. Next is to clean out this. Okay, so that's as done as it's gonna get for now. Uh, we have a few months until they come out here. Right now it's the beginning of March. They're not gonna come out here until at least May at the earliest. May, probably the end of May, um, especially full time. They might come out for a day or so if we have warm weather, but uh, not full time. But uh, I just uh, put these slats in. I backfilled along where the slats go. Uh, these are just one regular old one by sixes. They're not pressure treated. I take them out every year and put them back in. So over the next month or so, I'll have time to uh, pretty it up, plant some more plants, plant some weeds. Put the feeding rocks and the stones where I want them and, and um, we'll be ready uh, for when they're ready. Okay, so back here, I don't think I'm gonna do all that much. I might get rid of some of the hay. Some of them might just turn over and, and bury it. Um, but uh, I'm gonna clean it up a little bit, obviously get rid of those bins, do some with the Christmas tree. Um, just make sure it's all ready. I have a couple, uh, this is actually a Sergeant's Juniper down here uh, and a Eastern red cedar right there that I've been growing out for uh, pre bonsai and uh, <laughs> I've largely ignored them. So I'm going to plant them in here and uh, you can see how much I've ignored them. That wire is cutting in something fierce. So I'm going to take all the wire out, plant them in 
one or both of these enclosures somewhere just to give them some additional hiding spaces and maybe I'll dig them up in a couple of years and actually make them bonsai. But getting to work now. Okay, the wire is off these trees. Uh, the wire did cut in pretty good on these. Anybody appreciates bonsai. Uh, I might have neglected that a little bit too much. But the tree's healthy. This is the color that these guys get in the wintertime. Um, this one here uh, has not, I've totally ignored it. It does have some green growth on there, but it's a, there's a ton of uh, dead branches, which ultimately I might turn into dead wood. So this could turn into a really cool tree in time, but I've really neglected these two trees. So I'm gonna put them in the ground, give them a few more years, They'll serve a dual, dual purpose by adding some interest to the tourist enclosures and they'll grow out and get healthy again. Here I'm just turning the soil over to bury some of the hay and to expose some fresh soil. But when I throw out the seeds, I have some clover and dandelion chickweed and some other seeds on the way. Weeds will grow naturally, but I'd like to give them a little bit of a head start. Okay, so that's good enough. Doesn't look like I did much, but I did turn a lot of the soil over, a lot of the hay is buried. Um, probably not gonna do that again because I don't have sulcatas, but uh, this year it'll be fine. And uh, it doesn't look like much now, but by mid-April, maybe before then, this whole area will be pure green. It's gonna be crazy. I also dug a trench here for when I put the Herman's enclosure in. So that'll just be this whole area right here. And then the red foots will get from here over. And obviously the green enclosure, which I'm not gonna do anything with that today. But I do have to plant those two trees. Okay, so this is the hide box. Um, it's not really a box. What it is, is just an old Rubbermaid tote that was cracked on the bottom or down the side that the side that's buried. Uh, so I turned it on the side, kind of sort of buried it and, uh, and threw it in there. Tried to cover it up with sticks and it was a total fail. It looks like crap. So, um, it used to be for our saccadas that used to be in here. Um, so I'm gonna try to cover this up more where I'm hiding all the plastic uh, to make it look kind of like um, uh, a hill and I'll probably backfill it with some hay and put sticks up against it. And eventually you'll have this dome of uh, sticks and grass and stuff like that. Um, just to kind of make it look a little better. All right, I think it looks a lot better than it did. I put some hay on the inside too. Uh, now it'll look more like a mound. The hay and the, the, the branches from the Christmas tree that I shoved in there, a lot of stuff will decompose. So hopefully in time we'll have a, some kind of like a, a dirt in there and you'll have weeds growing up around that'll look uh, like a mound of, a mound. There you go. It probably won't last forever, but that's okay. Uh, it'll offer those red foot some security uh, and uh, a good hide for uh, when they want it. And that's the remnants of last year's Christmas tree. It was a good tree, but now it'll just serve to go back into the soil here. You know, it's a lot better than from the landfill. Uh, and uh, red foot still, a little thick through it and maybe hide under some of the branches. That is the remnants of last year's pumpkin. Another thing I throw in my uh, cages are the pumpkins. Uh, again, instead of throwing them away, that'll break down by the time um, they come in here in a month or two. That'll all be gone and we'll even have some pumpkins growing up in here, which you don't really get pumpkins because the redfoots eat the vines, but it's still good for them. So there you go. Okay, so that's about it. We cut up the Christmas tree, turned over some of the ground, did some stuff with hay. We did the redfoot enclosure at their house. Uh, next thing we got to do is put boards here and secure that so the Hermans can have this side uh, and uh, we'll clean up a little bit more we'll wait for our seeds to come in we'll plant it with some nice dandelions and some clover uh, didn't really do much with the Greek enclosure this one's probably fine and uh, we have some more work to do but that's enough work for the day thanks for watching and we'll see you again